Most of the time, when faced with a budget constraint, consumers will maximize their utility by choosing a bundle on their budget line at a point of tangency to an indifference curve. However, there are exceptions. These exceptions depend on preferences. Whether or not indifferencers are convex makes a big difference. In this video, I'll show you one case of what's called a corner solution. A corner solution is an optimal bundle in which one of the goods is not consumed. That is, it's an optimal bundle where you spend all of your income on one good and none of your income on the other good. At a corner solution, the budget line and indifference curve tangency condition might not apply. For example, let's think about the case of perfect substitutes. For perfect substitutes, if the MRS does not equal the MRT, then we will have a corner solution. Let me show you this. Here's an example of two goods that are considered perfect substitutes, Coke and Pepsi. Perfect substitutes means this consumer is always willing to trade these two goods at a constant rate. The blue line here shows the budget line. All three of these bundles, A, B, and C, are points on the budget line. But only one of these bundles, here bundle B, is not only on the budget line, but on the highest indifference curve given the budget set available. So what we'll see, just like always, is that the consumer is going to be on the budget line and at the highest indifference curve that still touches this budget line. But what's different here is we don't have a point of tangency. The optimal bundle is not going to be, in this case, where the MRS equals the MRT. I think the best way to learn how to attack a perfect substitute problem is by example. In this example, an individual's preferences are represented as u equals 2x plus y. That means that for this person, the MRS is a 2. For every 1x this consumer gets, she's willing to trade two y's. Or if you take away an x from this consumer, you need to give her two y's to remain as well off. The problem also tells us that income is $20, the price of x is 12, and the price of y is 4. So how do we find the optimal bundle? Well, there are two different approaches that I want you to learn for this problem. The first is a bang per buck approach. From the utility function, we can get that MUX is 2. Every additional X increases his utility by 2 utils. And from the utility function, we know MUY is 1. Every additional Y increases utility by 1 util. The, the problem told us that P of X was 12 and P of Y was 4. And so we can weigh these util, marginal utilities and prices by calculating the ratio of MUX and P of X and comparing it to the ratio of MUY to P of Y. In this example, this consumer always gets a bang per buck of 1 6 if that buck is spent on X and a higher bang per buck of 1 4 when that buck is spent on Y. Therefore, this consumer will only buy Y because its bang per buck is always going to be higher. Given that he has an income of $20, given that the price of X is $4, that means he can afford to buy five Ys and no Xs. That's the answer. This consumer will choose five Ys and no Xs. Another way that complements the bang per buck approach to find the answer is a graphical approach. In this example, the MRS is two. In comparison, in this example, the MRT is a larger 3. What that means is that at every point, the indifference curves are flatter than the budget line. I'll say that again. Since the MRS is smaller than the MRT, the indifference curves are flatter than the budget line. Visually, again, we're knowing we're going to be on the budget line because more is better. And we want to be not only on the budget line, but on the highest indifference curve possible. Every point on the budget line is affordable, but only this bundle, a corner solution, 
is on the highest indifference curve while also being on the budget line. The intuition looks something like this. According to his preferences, for each x he gives up, he requires two more y's to remain as well off. Well, according to prices in this problem, every time he gives up an x, he can actually afford to buy three more y's. Therefore, he can always be made better off by giving up an x and buying three more y's, so he'll keep doing that. He'll keep giving up x and buying y until he's given up all the x's he can give up and he's bought as much y as he can afford, and so y will again be income over the price of y, which is here 5, and x will be 0.